should be a terrorist to the anti-social element. The other question, the fifth common question that can be asked is, that you Muslims, you know, you all are ruthless people. You all are merciless people. You know, you all have non-veg. You all kill animals. You know, you should be vegetarian. Why do you have non-veg? You know, killing the animals, you know, poor living creatures, killing them. You all are ruthless people. And this question is more often posed by Indians, which alhamdulillah now you find them throughout the world. So there are many non-Muslim Indians who are pure vegetarian and they say that, you know, why are your Muslims so ruthless? Why do you all kill the animals, etc.? I would like to mention that a Muslim can be a very good Muslim even by being a pure vegetarian. He can be. If he wants to be a good Muslim, he can be a good Muslim even by being a pure vegetarian. But the question is, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us permission to have non-veg, why should we not have non-veg? That's the basic question. Allah says in the glorious Quran in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 1, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amun, O you who believe, lawful for you are all four-footed animal with the exception name Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 5, that Allah has created for you cattle and from it you derive warmth. And in it are various benefits and of the meat you can eat. Quran says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter 23, verse number 21, that verily in the cattle is a sin for you. We give you to drink from what is within the body. And from it you derive various benefits. And of the meat you can eat. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us permission to have non-veg, why should we not have non-veg? And if you analyze that meat, it's rich in protein, it's rich in iron, it's rich in vitamin B1, it's rich in niacin, it's nutritious. In fact, in the vegetables, you will not find a good quality protein at all in the vegetables. And if you analyze the set of teeth of the herbivorous animal, the cow, the goat, the sheep, if you look at the set of teeth, they have a flat set of teeth. If you analyze the set of teeth of the carnivorous animal, the tiger, the leopard, the lion, they have got pointed teeth. They have canine teeth. If you go in the mirror and look at our set of teeth, the human beings, we have pointed teeth as well as flat teeth. If Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give us this pointed teeth? For what? We have non-veg. If he wanted us to have only vegetables, we would have given a flat set of teeth. We look in the mirror every time, but we don't realize that. Allah has shown us signs. And if you analyze the digestive system of the herbivorous animal, the cow, the goat, the sheep, they can only digest vegetables. They cannot digest non-veg. The digestive system of the carnivorous animal, the lion, the tiger, the leopard, they can only digest non-veg, they cannot digest vegetables. But the digestive system of the human being can digest veg as well as non-veg. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give us a digestive system which can digest both veg as well as non-veg? But naturally you have it. If you analyze, many Hindus who say that we are pure vegetarian, if you read their scriptures, it's mentioned in the scripture that the sages, the saints, they had non-veg. And if you read the Ayodhya Khandam, chapter number 20, chapter 26, as well as chapter number 94, it says that when Ram was sent for Banwas, he told his mother that I will have to sacrifice my tasty meat dishes. When Ram said that he will have to sacrifice his tasty meat dishes, that means he had meat. When Ram can have meat, why can't you have meat? Many people may not know the finer details of Raman, but they know the broad outline. And surely they know the story that when Ram was sent for Banwas, along with him went his wife Sita. And one day Sita asked Ram to kill the buck, the deer. The question I want to pose them is, that why did Sita ask Ram to kill the buck? Why? Why did Sita ask Ram to kill the deer? There will be some Hindus who will say that Sita wanted a pet. <laughs> I asked them, what will Sita do with a dead pet? <laughs> if she wants a pet, it should be a life pet. 
the only reason that Sita told Ram to kill the buck was to have it meet. When Ram and Sita can have meet, why can't you and I have meet? So if you analyze the Hindu scriptures, do give permission for a person to have non-veg, but later on, because of the influence of the other religions, like Jainism, etc., to prevent people from adopting their way of life, they started adopting vegetarianism. And when you ask these people who believe in pure vegetarianism, that, why don't you have non-veg? So they say, that, see, eating non-veg is a sin. You ask them, why? See, because killing living creatures is a crime. By having non-veg, you are killing animals, you are killing living creatures. So I tell them, Alhamdulillah. If a person can survive in this world without killing living creatures, I would be the first one to follow it. You know, because what they say about plants, today science tells us that even plants are living creatures. Previously, they did not know about that. Previously, they thought that plants weren't living creatures. Even plants have got life. So the logic has changed. The logic has changed. And even when you breathe in, you breathe in germs, which are living organisms. You cannot survive for five minutes without killing living organisms. So now the logic has changed. See, the plants are living creatures, but the plants, they can't feel pain. Therefore, killing a plant is a lesser crime as compared to killing animals. Very good logic. The plants can't feel pain. Today, science tells us that the plants can even feel pain. They can even cry. They can even feel happy. Do you know that? But the cry of the plant cannot be heard by the human ear. Because the human ear can only hear between frequency of 20 cycles per second to 20,000 cycles per second. Anything below or above this, the human ear can't hear. Have you heard of the silent dog whistle? The master whistles, and the dog comes running, but the human beings can't hear. Because the dog can hear up to 40,000 cycles per second. So the whistle that the master blows is between 20,000 cycles per second to 40,000 cycles per second. The human beings can't hear, but the dog hears and comes running to the master. There was a farmer in America who converted the cry of the plants to the human audible level. And you could immediately come to know when did the plant cry, if it had any problem that required water. So even the today's science say that the plants can even feel pain, they can even cry, but you cannot hear their pain. And there was a non-Muslim who had a maximum argument with me, and he told me that, see brother Zakir, I agree with you, that in the plants, they have got life, they can feel pain, but in the plants, have got only three senses. Animals have got five senses. Therefore, killing animals is a greater crime. So I told him, okay, for sake of argument, I agree with you. For sake of argument, I agree with you. The plants have got three senses, animals have got five senses. So I asked him, my dear brother, suppose you have a younger brother who is born deaf and dumb. Can't hear, can't speak, two senses less. After he grows up, there's a man who comes and kills him. So will you go and tell the judge, Oh, me Lord, give the murderer less punishment because my brother had two senses less. <laughs> will you go and tell like that? In fact, you will go and tell the judge, me Lord, give this criminal a bigger punishment because they had killed a masoom. They had killed an innocent person. You couldn't even fight back. Islamic logic doesn't work like that, two senses or three senses or five senses. Allah says in the glory of Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 168 that eat of the good things that we have provided you. What is good? you can have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine wisdom, He knows what our requirement is. Therefore, if you analyze, if you analyze, that if suppose I agree with non-Muslims, that everyone should be a pure vegetarian. Everyone. Do you know the world will be overpopulated with cattle? Because the gestation period of the cattle is very small. You kill a million, another million will be born. So if you stop having them, we have a problem of overpopulation of human beings. From tomorrow we'll have four population of cattle. You know, Allah has made them in such a way that the gestation period is small and the reproduction is very fast. And personally, if a non-Muslim doesn't have non-veg, I've got no problem. I'm happy in fact. I'll tell you the reason. But if he comes and tells me that Brother Zakir, why do you have non-veg? Then there's a problem. I tell them why I shouldn't have. If he doesn't have non-veg, I'm happy. You know why? Because suppose every Indian non-Muslim starts having non-veg, then the price of the meat will go high. So, you know, I may have to pay more money. So where it comes the non-Muslim not having non-veg, I've got no problem. But when he comes and interferes with me and says, you're doing something wrong, then I explain to him the reason. 